It's Nolan. What's going on, y'all? It's the kid, Jay Nolan here. Now, I don't know what prompted Birdman to go on Clubhouse talking greasy about Gilly the Kid over the weekend, but you know I gotta talk about it, man. Because Gilly has just released their response to the public, letting it be known how much disdain is between these two men. Now, going back, for those of y'all that don't know, Gilly the Kid was signed to cash money back in the days, him and his homie Dutch. So they have like years of animosity and bad blood, right? Back in 2005-ish, 2006, Gilly the Kid came out and let it be known that he had did some writing for uh, Lil Wayne on the Carter 1 and the Carter 2 or between the Carter 2. They went back and forth dissing Gilly kind of launched a career for himself i won't say launched a career because he was already out there he was already doing things in philly getting money but he wasn't known on a national scale like that right so that's where he kind of launched his national recognition was igniting that conflict with wayne and cash money ever since that time they've seen to never have patched up their differences right on million dollars worth of game about a year ago gilly has said that he saw wayne they pieced it up they shook hands or whatever but he put a little extra sauce on the interaction, making it seem like Wayne ran from him or something by saying, pew, he went through the door. From that point, they released the footage of when Gilly made his way into Wayne's backstage VIP section. He made his way into that space. Wayne went off and got down, sat with his crew, did what he did. You know what I'm saying? Smiled when he seen him and everything. Didn't show no hate. Kept it neutral. Again, we saw that Gilly had threw extra sauce on the motherfucking steak. At that time, Birdman came out and said, bro, I don't know what it is that you're trying to do. You're trying to make yourself seem like super gangster. We did not get that vibe from you. Actually, it was Mac Main that came out with that information. Excuse me. But it was well known that folks from that side, you know what I mean, Cash Money, Young Money, was not feeling how Gilly was relaying that information. And they basically said, this is why we can't be cool. This is why we ain't effed with you since the early 2000s, because you be doing shit like this. Now... Birdman came out over the weekend, as I stated, he was on Clubhouse with WAC 100, and they were speaking about the time that Gilly was with Cash Money. Birdman says, I never made no money off no Gilly the Kid. We signed them because we liked their style. They had their whole little crew. They had their movement. We was feeling what they was doing. They came and fucked with us for a little bit. Never put out a project on him. He ain't never wrote nothing for Wayne. He ain't never wrote nothing for Moolah. Gilly the Kid was very adamant that he not only wrote for Lil Wayne, but he also said that he wrote on Birdman's projects, basically stating that Birdman never wrote no fucking rhymes. He ain't the type of dude that's going to go in there with no pen and a pad and be writing no lyrics. So he said, who you think did that? Wayne wasn't writing his shit. I was writing his. I did both of their shit. Them guys never took too kindly to him putting that information out there, whether it was true or false. We'll never know. We would need to see actual footage of them in the studio. But unfortunately, during that time, people weren't documenting those processes the same way that they do today. Birdman also spoke on the moment that he claims he lost respect for Gilly the Kid, which is when they were in Philadelphia going to some of them shops out there buying throwback jerseys. You know what I mean? This is the early 2000s era. You got to keep in mind what was going on. So they was buying jerseys very heavily at that time. Philadelphia is the home of Mitchell and Ness where they had all the big time jerseys. So that makes a lot of sense. And he basically said that this was during the time where Gilly and Beanie Siegel had beef. You could go on YouTube right now and look up the diss tracks that they had on each other. It was a very heated beef that they had over who was the king of Philly back then. He said at that time, Beanie Siegel popped up at the store, made his way over to him very calmly, planted his hand into his shoulder. You know what I mean? Gave him that, gave him that stern, you good? You know what I'm saying? Escorted him outside, let him know some things. Now, they didn't say exactly what happened outside. Some people say Beanie Siegel punched him, knocked him out. Some people say he gave him a stern talking to to let, let it be known. He didn't like the way that Gilly was on the radio going crazy. You know what I'm saying? Looked him in his eye like a man, said what it was. He said that Beanie Siegel had a gun on him. And they were expecting Gilly to lash out and get on some G-ish. But, I mean, look at Gilly. Gilly, to this day, he weighs, what, 160 pounds, 170 pounds? He's been the same size since that time. Beanie Siegel was like 250, 280 very well known for putting hands on people, going to war with the police. He was a very threatening figure. I'm not saying that Gilly ain't putting no work in streetwise. You know what I'm saying? It's documented that he was doing what he was doing as well. But that was a matchup he wasn't going to win one-on-one. -on -one. Let's just keep it a buck. 
at that point, Birdman said, oh, man, he ain't did nothing. He going to let that man come in here, escort him outside, talk to him, and he just going to walk off like it's, like it's nothing? Oh, he ain't who I thought he was. And he said they jumped on the tour bus and went about their business after that day. Of course, I doubt that that was the last time they saw each other or did any business. But, you know, when the stories come out 20 years later, everybody put their extra oomph on it to make it seem like, oh, he a bitch ass nigga. You know, you know how this shit go, man. Nonetheless, we have a response from Gilly. He comes out and I'm gonna actually play the video for y'all. I didn't want to play the Birdman shit because I would have had to chop it all up and Clubhouse already sounds terrible and there's so many people that are circulating the audio from the Birdman conversation that has been chopped up and shit. I'm not finna piecemeal nothing together, but let's see what Gilly had to say. I'm bigger than baby. Ain't that crazy? I'm bigger than that right now. I generate more money than that right now. I don't hear that shit. It's counting me out. I'm bigger than you. Shut up. Nobody give a f about you. Gilly, what's up with Beanie Smacky? Come on, man. Y'all don't believe that shit, man. Cut it the f out. You just wanted something to say, man. Why well, bird man wait so long to say something, man? I can't even respond when you say something 25 years later. You only responding because you don't hear the roar of the crowd no more. You talk about some shit 25 years later. I done called you a nigga for 25 years. 25 years later, you respond, sit your bitch down somewhere. I ain't gonna hear that shit. I don't even disrespect you don't even I disrespect because I knew you pussy. I see the way you treat a real rest in peace killer stone. You could never treat me like that though. Cause you already know. You know what type of I am. Talk about I ain't like that. Why it took you 25 years to say that? <laughs> took a nigga 25 years to get some heart to say I ain't like that. Fucking coward. You treat real Nigga, you came in the game with you old money to you a coward. Shut up. You on Clubhouse at 50 talk. Shut your pussy up, boy. Might care about you no. You old nigga. Shut up. So there you have it from Gilly the Kid, man. Or Gilly the King as he goes by now. As you can see, the animosity is still there. He says, I've been talking ish about you for 25 years. You never said nothing. It took you all this time to finally say something just to say you didn't like something I said about you. Nah, we not taking that. You can keep that shit going. You don't hit a roar of the crowd no more. You don't got no fans. I'm making more money than you at this current point. We not talking about none of that. I can't fully disagree with Gilly on this. Um, when he says you're in old news, you're not doing nothing no more. I mean, who is signed to Birdman at this point? Wayne has left. Nikki's left. Drake's left. Rich Gang, Young Thug, Rich Homie Quan, gone. Who is signed to Birdman? Who is Cash Money at this point? I know he has younger artists under underneath his wing that he kind of affiliates himself with. He ro rotates niggas out like every couple years. You see him with some new flunkies. But who is he with? I mean, he he doesn't necessarily have to do anything else in music ever again. I mean, he did 20 years. Well, I won't say 20, but from 98 up until what, 2014, 15, you know, around the time when shit went sour with Wayne and everybody else figured out their way to get the fuck on. That's a solid 17 years of history behind that Cash Money logo. So we can't take nothing away from that. But as somebody like Birdman who has this persona, he still walks around like he's currently running the game. Yeah, we do got to question a few things, especially when everybody that's left needed money, especially early on. The hot boys were not taken care of properly. They had to try to take you to court. Wendy Day has been very open about how she helped y'all get that universal deal, all the money that y'all got off that and you didn't want to pay her. You told her, take her, take you to court. She did that and you still never paid what you owe. That type of shit don't gain no respect. It don't garner you no legendary status, no legacy. We saw Rick Ross haul you out about the Wayne situation and the DJ Khaled situation, how Khaled was taken advantage of during his time with them. So Gilly definitely has a point. But I also got to say, you know, when people start talking about money and that's the only point that you're making when you have a dispute with somebody, that means that you don't really have that much of a strong dispute to stand on. That's just my personal opinion. I like Gilly a lot. I watch me and I was worth the game. I've been a Gilly fan. I knew about all those beefs back then. I knew about all the disc records. I was actively listening to them as they were coming out. I was a kid playing these mixtapes. I'm not a revisionist historian. I was really listening to this shit. P cutter motherfucking mixtapes. A lot of people ain't old enough to have owned a P cutter mixtape. But at the end of the day, I really don't see the value in them beefing, going back and forth. Both of them are 
you know, elder statesmen, their OGs in, at this point in this game. You know what I'm saying? They should really be kicked back, kicking their feet up, enjoying their riches, enjoying the fruits of their labor. Gilly the Kid just got like a $50 million deal with Barstool Sports off the podcast, man. It ain't no reason to be going back and forth with Bird, man. You know what I'm saying? You got bigger fish to fry. You got so much on the table, so much positivity going on, man. Shouldn't even justify it with a response, but I understand. Let me know what y'all think of this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the post notification bell for all updates. I'll see y'all on the next one. Much love and respect, y'all. Peace. Yeah. King of my city in Kodasak. Uh. Coming out swinging like soldier rags. Yeah. Leading my people like quarterback. But I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Yeah. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Yeah. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Yeah. Spinning the block for the gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. Yeah. We don't do beef for computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Yeah. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. Uh -huh. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully abreast. Yeah. I was ready for years and they died of me. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like Calories. Cross my mind, I came back with some battery. Stand for my honor, but you run no gunner. Packing a stick with a drummer. Wanna catch my bad one from him? I came too far to be hung. Let's go. New day, let's get it. Big chain, let's get it. More fame, let's get it. No shame, let's get it. New day, let's get it. Big chain.